We have a decision in the RCR, Austin Dillon appeal of their Richmond penalty. Plus, NBC is finally going commercial free. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. We have a decision in the RCR, Austin Dillon appeal. And to the surprise of nobody, uh, yeah, their appeal got denied once again. The verdict did not come down like it was the OJ trial. People were not crowded around television, standing outside of storefronts, looking at tube TVs. No, instead it just got tweeted out that Austin Dillon and RCR did not win their appeal. Brandon Banesh, the spotter that was suspended for three races, did have his suspension reduced from three races to one. So Brett Griffin is once again unemployed as a spotter. He will not be spotting this weekend at Daytona for uh, Austin Dillon and or Jesse Love. Instead, he will go back to not going to the racetrack, but talking about it on door bumper clear. Brandon Vanesh will be back at the racetrack. Austin Dillon remains ineligible for the playoffs based off of his Richmond win. He will have to win on Saturday night at Daytona or next weekend at the Southern 500. He does have a thing for a crown jewel event, so maybe he ends up winning that one. It'd be bizarre, but it could happen. So this isn't really a surprise, right? And the appeals board essentially did what NASCAR should have probably said in the first place. And let me say, NASCAR made the right decision. I have no problem with the decision that they made. He should have been stripped of his playoff eligibility. I would have probably taken the win away from him, too. I know that's probably not a popular opinion. The panel said this about the outcome of their decision. They said, quote, NASCAR represents elite motorsports, and as such, its drivers are expected to demonstrate exemplary conduct if its series championships are to be validated. In this case, the line was crossed. And now I think I 100% agree with everything that the panel said right there. Drivers should be held to a standard. And in this case, a line was crossed. You cannot have a valid championship if people are just driving through one another intentionally wrecking people. You can't hook somebody coming to the line. You can't just go in and wipe somebody out just to just to do it. There's a difference between a bump and run and a dump and run. And what Austin Dillon did was a dump and run. And I just think if it's that obvious, fifth gear pin going into the corner, no intentions of ever making the corner, then yeah, that's not racing. That's not racing. It's demolition derby. If you want to go do that, go to your county fair and put around in your Chevy Cavalier and do that. Don't come and do it at a NASCAR Cup Series race. Maybe Austin Dillon's more befitting of a demo derby at this point, but he does get to keep his Richmond win. RCR did put out their own statement as well, and to the surprise of, once again, nobody, they will be taking this appeal process to the final version of the appeal, uh, the final appeal officer, the FAO, I believe is how NASCAR said it as the acronym, which everybody had to immediately go look up unless you're Bob Pockris. Richard Childers Racing said, quote, RCR is disappointed in the results of today's hearing in front of the National Motorsports Appeals Panel. We respect NASCAR appeals process, but we do not believe that today's outcome reflects the facts presented. We plan to appeal the decision to the final appeal officer. Sometimes you just have to take your L's. And in this case, I think RCR just very much needs to go ahead and take their loss. NASCAR drew a line. What Austin Dillon did was over that line. Again, he intentionally wrecked two different competitors coming to the checkered flag. That is just too much. People are going to, of course, comment and say that Denny Hillen wrecked himself. He did not. The SMT data says that he didn't. He was following the racing line. We're not talking about that anymore. It's exhausting uh, to have to have all these people come to the defense of Austin Dillon when they never would have. But because it's Denny Hamlin, because it's Joey Logano, everyone comes to the defense of Austin Dillon which is banana land because before that race, they all would have been like Austin Dillon, the silver spoon kid. He stinks at racing. Get him out of here. Put somebody else in that three car. And now all of a sudden they're like, Austin Dillon's the guy. Dale Seniors was driving that race car. F Denny Hamlin, F Joey Logano. And it's perplexing. It's just, it's fandom. I get it. But when you take a thousand you know, foot view of this and you're like, driver A did this to driver B, driver C, is that a penalty? Don't attach names to it. You're going to be like, yeah, dude, you can't just drive through two people. But when you attach names to it, everybody loses their their mind. So RCR will appeal it to the final appeals officer. Will that get overturned? Absolutely not. This is a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of resources. Move on to Daytona. Try to win there. Try to win at Darlington. And next time you're in contention to win, just don't drive through two people and get a better restart. Austin Dillon should spend his entire offseason this year in the simulator just practicing restart, 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 because he is one of the worst, if not statistically the worst restart in the NASCAR Cup Series among full-time drivers. Austin Dillon loses his appeal, will continue on to the second part of the appeals process, which he will also likely lose. 
Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com, find out a pair for you. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have the classic frames on right now, really partial to these. Uh, I wear them, SVG wears them, Josh Berry wears them, Ryan Priest. drivensunglasses.com, code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. NBC is doing something NASCAR fans have been begging for for quite some time. NBC announced on Wednesday, that the action from Daytona, Atlanta, and Talladega, all green flag action will be shown without a full screen commercial. They're going to experiment with different ways to promote their advertisers during green flag running. That could mean side-by-side -side commercials. It could mean overlays. It could mean live reads. They will show you every single lap of green flag racing, and that is a massive win for NASCAR fans. It's something that people have been begging for for years. I have been on Twitter for years saying that Fox and NBC need to experiment with different ways to promote their advertisers without taking up a full screen commercial. We don't need all of those. You're going to have to get creative with it. You're going to have to change up how you approach advertising. And as a guy that works in marketing and advertising, there's plenty of options for doing that. And it just seemed like they never wanted to take the chance to do it. NASCAR is the only major sport in the entire country where you miss the actual action that's happening. Imagine just going to break during a Major League Baseball game when Aaron Judge is up to bat and coming back and him not being up to bat. And they're like, hey, in replay here, Aaron Judge uh, struck out looking. You're like, okay, cool. That would have been nice to see live. Or imagine just missing a monster grand slam or an Ellie De La Cruz stolen base or him scoring from first to home on a, what, you know, a regular single for most players. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. Imagine just going to a commercial during the NFL drive. Oh, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is marching downfield with Travis Kelsey. We're going to take a quick 30-second break here and tell you about Geico or Progressive or whatever else you want to. They would never do that. Soccer shows you all commercial-free for the first 45 minutes plus stoppage time. Halftime, you're going to get commercials. You're going to get your post game or your... Um, uh, halftime report. And then in the second half, you're going to get 45 minutes plus stoppage time commercial free. Once again, NASCAR desperately needs that. And I get it right. It all comes down to a cost. NBC, NASCAR or NBC and Fox are spending a lot of money for the NASCAR broadcasting rights. They have to try to make that up somehow. And, you know, you have to weigh it versus how much you're charging your advertisers, how many eyeballs you're getting. You come to a price with that. And now you're kind of fluctuating on this and you need to make sure that you're putting that out there enough to cover the cost of what you're uh, producing and putting on television and the rights that you paid for and the on air talent and the people behind the scenes. I get it. I 100 percent understand where this is all coming from. But there's alternate ways to do that. And I'm excited that NBC's trying it out. So it's a lot like TNT's what nonstop full throttle coverage or whatever they referred to it as um, years ago at this point, over a decade. But yeah, so you're going to see every green flag lap of Daytona, Atlanta, and Talladega, three of the tracks that you desperately need to be able to see every single lap because shit could go crazy at any time and you absolutely need to be able to see it. So I'm excited. Good for them. Good for NASCAR fans. This is a win for everybody involved. Hopefully we see the same thing happen next year with Prime and, and Warner Brothers Digital, TNT, Max, True, whatever the heck common combination all of that's going to be. It'd be nice to see this happen with every race. And I like the fact that they're experimenting with it to see sort of what the options are for it. Because I'll be honest, I'm much more likely to support a sponsor that's not taking up a full screen ad. If you're just doing a side by side or you're doing an overlay, a live read, the next 20 laps are sponsored by Mercedes Benz or Bud Light or Geico or whatever. I'm much more likely to use your products, probably not Geico. But then if you take up a full screen ad and you're like, get progressive and put flow, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Also, you guys are terrible with my homeowner's insurance. Oh, there's a tree branch over your house. You got to cut it down. The tree's 150 years old. I'm not cutting the tree down. It's also not over my house. I'm standing out there like an absolute buffoon taking photos of the sky being like, look, side of the house, tree. And they're like, God, oh, no, satellite makes it look like. Call up all state. They're like, yeah, no problem. So, yeah, I'm not doing business with Progressive. Not that that matters to any of you, but you now you now, you know. So I'm happy about this full throttle, nonstop coverage. I'm just calling it full throttle. Now, it's cool. 
uh, that they're they're taking this chance. So I'm happy about that. Also, Parker Kligerman and that number 48 Big Machine Records racing team were given an L1 penalty following Michigan um, this well, this past weekend. On Wednesday, they were given an L1 penalty for modifying the spoiler. So they got hit with a $25,000 fine, 20 uh, driver and owner points as well, and got stripped of five playoff points. So for Parker, if he makes the playoffs, he's going to be starting... Um, and a deficit in terms of playoff points. But for him, that's a big blow. He goes from 36 above the cut line to only 16 heading into Daytona where anything can happen. Um, obviously they have a few more races than the cup series do, but yeah, Daytona is not a place where you want to lose, have already lost 20 points. And you're like, oh, that's a good buffer in case we get caught up in an accident. Now he's going to have to really pay attention to what he's doing. Unfortunate for them, but don't modify a spoiler there. So let me know in the comments what you think about the RCR appeals process and them losing, of course, um, NBC going uh, no commercial breaks for the green flag uh, racing at Daytona, Atlanta and Talladega, plus Parker Clearance penalty. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.